as I said, we're going to be discussing gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender. So, our first activity, okay, as I said, this is a safe space, but I don't want you to be politically correct for this first activity. Basically, I don't want you to worry about offending anybody. You're not going to offend me, you're not going to offend the people around you, offend the people around you, because the answers you're going to give me do not have to be your own, um, your own beliefs. They could be your own beliefs, because again, it's a safe space, but it could also be things that you've heard in music, seen in movies, seen on TV, heard from loved ones or friends. Okay, so we're not going to be politically correct, and it's a safe space. So I want you to imagine, imagine it's Saturday, you go to the mall with your friends, you've been shopping for a few hours, you get a little hungry, grab yourself a lay and pretzel, because they're delicious. And you're sitting there, and you're eating your pretzel, and your friend taps you on the shoulder. And he's like, oh my god, look at that guy over there. Just look at him. That is the gayest guy I've ever seen in my life. There is no way that guy is not gay. Gayest guy. And you're like, all right, whatever, you keep eating your pretzel. Friend taps you on the other shoulder, he's like, oh my god. Look at that girl. Biggest lesbian I've ever seen. There is no way that girl is lesbian. I am sure that that girl is a lesbian. You're like, all right, whatever. You came to, you know, shop. Turns out you're gonna see the gayest gay people you've ever seen. I want you to tell me what made your friend say that that was the gayest gay guy they've ever seen and the biggest lesbian. Safe space does not have to be your own beliefs. Could be. What are some things that might make somebody say that that is the gayest gay guy ever or the biggest lesbian? It's like, um, the girl has like a really like nice leather jacket. Leather jacket. Girl with short hair. Short hair, my favorite example. I was right on the top of everyone says it. It's the best one. Give a guy like a feminine voice. Feminine voice? What makes a voice feminine? Maybe she's like high. High pitched voice? Talks with his hands. Talks with his hands. Alright, this is a pretty good list. So, as students, what do we know that this is a list of? Stereotypes. And what do we know about stereotypes? Are stereotypes always true? No, can anybody define a stereotype for me? Um, you got all the answers. In, <laughs> in assumptions or about a group of people that in a lot of cases is true and there's no way to the rule. So I'm gonna I'm gonna change it up a little bit. That was good though. A stereotype is a generalization about an entire group based on a little bit of knowledge. Based on the fact that maybe you have met a gay man or a lesbian woman and you are making assumptions or a generalization about that entire group based on that one person. Assuming that you know all of those, all the people who are gay based on these things. Right? Because for a stereotype to always be true, every single gay man would have to have a high pitched voice, talk with their hands, but not like an Italian, um, and be holding hands with another guy. And not a single non-gay man could have a high-pitched voice. One of my favorite examples, Mike Tyson. Highest voice I've ever heard in a man. Not a gay man. They would have to, um, every single non-gay man could not talk with their hands in whichever way you were talking about. And not a single non-gay man could be holding hands with another guy. Now this is a very interesting um, stereotype to put up there because we assume just because we see somebody's behavior with other people that we know what that relationship is, right? A lot of times men don't hold hands with other men, but maybe they're brothers, maybe they're holding hands for other reasons, right? We have here holding hands with another girl. It is very common nowadays for girls to hold hands with their friends who are other girls. To assume that we know somebody's relationship with another person just by seeing their behavior is, is incorrect, right? And in the same, in the same way, in order for stereotypes to always be true, every single lesbian would have to have short hair. And not a single non-gay woman could have short hair. What's one of the most popular haircuts nowadays? Short hair. Pixie cut, right? Emma Watson rocks a pixie cut all the time. Looks adorable, totally hot, not a lesbian, unfortunately. Jennifer Lawrence rocks a pixie cut all the time. Looks great, not a lesbian. Halle Berry has been rocking a pixie cut since the 90s. Not a lesbian, right? Every single lesbian would have to wear a leather jacket, and not a single non-gay woman could wear a leather jacket. Which is a, this is a very true stereotype, but leather jackets are also just very popular. Maybe you ride motorcycles, maybe you just happen to like leather. Um, every single lesbian would have to be tough 
or aggressive, and not a single non-gay woman could be tough or aggressive. Every single lesbian would have to be uh, adorning some kind of Orange is the New Black gear and be into Orange is the New Black, and not a single non-gay woman could be into Orange is the New Black, Orange is the New Black, was and is the most popular show being watched on Netflix right now. I can assure you that it is not all gay women watching that show. Um, and every single gay woman would have to be holding hands with another girl, and not a single non-gay woman could ever happen to just hold hands with another female, whether you're crossing the street, whether you're just holding it out of comfort and care, um, but assuming that we know that relationship, but just by seeing the behavior is unfair, right? Because what if you had somebody come up to you and say, based on the fact that you have a high-pitched voice and you're talking with your hands, I know that you are gay. I know something about you just by looking at you. Is that fair? Is that fair for somebody to come up to you and say that, you know what, I know this about you. Whether or not you know this about yourself, I know this about you just simply based on the way you look. Right? Either based on the way you're dressed, based on your skin color, based on your sexual orientation, anything. Is it fair for anybody to make assumptions or think that they know who you are based on how you look? Is it? Somebody answered it. No, right? It's not. So why would we do that to other people? Whether or not it involves their sexual orientation. You should never make assumptions or assume that you know something about somebody else without even speaking to them about it, without them ever telling you. Because who can tell you their sexual orientation? Thanks, only that person. And who can tell you your sexual orientation? Right, it's your own identity, yourself. Because maybe you happen to be a non-gay woman who has short hair and wears a leather jacket. Does that make you gay that day? <laughs> just that day. Just that day, just that time that you're wearing it, right? No, and maybe you happen to be a gay woman with long hair who hates leather jackets and is super timid. Does that mean that you're now heterosexual? No. So can you tell someone's sexual orientation just by looking at them? No, you cannot, because only they can tell you your sexual orientation. And it's really important to understand that. That a lot of people will come and say that, no, no, you can tell somebody's sexual orientation just by looking at them based on all these stereotypes, based on all these characteristics. And I can't stand here and tell you, like, you can't get vibes, you can't think that this person may be gay or lesbian or bisexual, but you cannot know. You cannot definitively know that that person is gay, lesbian, or bisexual just by looking at them. The only way you can know is if that person tells you, okay? And that's important, very important to understand. Just the same way that no one can know anything about you unless they talk to you about it. So always flip it back onto yourself and think of how you would feel if somebody did that to you, okay? Does anybody know of another term, another two-word term that's been used interchangeably with the term sexual orientation? Also starts with the word sexual. Anybody? Sexual. Oh, what with all the answers? Sexual preference. Sexual preference. Yeah, good job. So sexual preference is no longer used, okay? And we, <laughs> she, she just gave the presentation. Um, and sexual preference is no longer used, and if it is, it is trying to be phased out. And I'm going to explain to you why the word sexual, pre or the term sexual preference should no longer be used. So I want you to think about the weekend, right? It's Thursday. Maybe you want to start planning out your weekend. You're thinking Friday, I've been in school all week, I'm going to be tired, I'm going to watch a Netflix marathon, pass out. Awesome. Saturday, I'm going to go to the mall, go to the movies, hang out with my friends, go to dinner, stay out all night, doesn't matter, it's Saturday. And then Sunday, I'm going to do all my homework, hang out with my family, go to bed early because I have school all week. Can you make those plans on Thursday? For the weekend? Yeah, you can, right? But... Can you get out of school on Friday and realize, you know what, I have a ton more energy than I thought I would. I'm going to go to the movies, go to the mall, hang out with my friends all night Friday night. And then wake up on Saturday and realize, you know what, I kind of want to do all my homework on Saturday and hang out with my family. And then Sunday, you want to get up, watch a Netflix marathon, pass out. Can you do that? Can you change your plans day in and day out based on how you feel that day? Based on your choice, based on your preference? You can, right? All right, I got a couple nods, I'll take it. But can somebody wake up on a Friday, pull out their little sexual orientation menu, and be like, Friday. Friday sounds like a really good day to be gay. I don't even get on Friday. And then Saturday, you take a look and you're like, you know what, Saturday? I'm going to be heterosexual on Saturday. Why not? Right? And then Sunday, screw it. I'll run the gamut. I'll be bisexual on Sunday. <laughs> can somebody do that? 
and be on a safe space. Can somebody change their sexual orientation day in and day out based on how they feel that day, based on what they prefer? No, they cannot. Your sexual orientation is who you are and how you feel, and it is a constant. It does not change. What can change, because there are a lot of individuals out there who believe that somebody can just wake up and decide, I'm going to be this today. What can change is your identity, your sexual identity. That is whether or not you are out, whether or not the, you decide that you are comfortable and confident enough within yourself to let other people know that you are gay, lesbian, bisexual, any other identity that you, that you feel as though you are or believe that you are. And if somebody comes out to you on a Friday and says, you know what, Liz, I, I love you, I know that I'm comfortable enough with you and that we're gonna be friends no matter what, and they come out to me on a Friday and say, Liz, I'm gay. Does that mean on Thursday they were heterosexual? No, right? They've always been gay. It's just that now they are comfortable and confident enough to talk to me about it. And that's important to know. Your sexual identity, I mean, your sexual orientation does not change your sexual identity. Does. We have this big phenomenon happening right now where you have a lot of individuals who are 50 and over coming out for the first time, who were married to a heterosexual partner, who have children with that partner, and now they are coming out and saying that they're gay, that they're bisexual, whatever their identity may be. Um, and that phenomenon is happening because 25 years ago, 30 years ago, there was a culture in our, in our country that still exists, but <coughs> luckily not on as large of a level, where you could be beaten on the streets for being gay. You could be beaten to death on the streets for being gay. You could be kicked out of your home. You could be completely ostracized from everybody you've ever known simply for being gay. And those individuals stayed in the closet. Those individuals got married, had heterosexual partners because they believed this is what I am supposed to do. This is who I'm supposed to be. Or if I am who I feel, I, who I know I am, I'm gonna lose everybody in my life. So now you have these individuals coming out and letting everybody know that I'm gay and that this is who I've always been, but I couldn't tell them yet. So they've always been gay. That, that was their sexual orientation. Their sexual identity was heterosexual for fear of repercussions for being out. It's not that your sexual orientation changes throughout your life. First of all, sexual orientation, human sexuality is very fluid. Um, there's almost nobody who fits into a cookie cutter category of gay, lesbian, heterosexual, or bisexual. Very, very few. So there's a statistic out there that one in 10 individuals are GLB, or are, G, are gay or lesbian, right? That's a very popular statistic, one in 10. Um, in that same research that brought out the statistic that one in 10 individuals are gay, the same statistic of one in 10 individuals are exclusively heterosexual, exclusively. Never had a thought, feeling, emotion, curiosity ever about somebody of the same sex. So 10 plus 10, 20, right? 20% of society is exclusively gay or heterosexual. 80% of society falls into this gray area. Not that 80% of society identifies as bisexual, not that 80% of society identifies as something other than gay or heterosexual, but it's fluid. It falls into that gray area. And it's not that somebody, somebody who comes out and labels themselves, like labels within themselves are inherently imperfect, right? Not, nobody is gonna fall perfectly into a label, but we utilize them to help ourselves communicate. So you have these individuals who maybe at one point in their life, they say, you know what, I'm bisexual. And then they learn more about themselves or they learn more about the society around them and they realize, you know what, actually I'm pansexual. I didn't even know that that was a thing before. I didn't even know that that was an identity, but now I know that that's who I am. They've always had this attraction to, to those individuals, but they didn't know how to define it. So that kind of evolution does happen for individuals. It's not that the attraction or that their orientation is changing, it's that they now have a better understanding of who they are. The same as anything, the same as your interests in life grow, the same as you know you thought that, or you know that you're really into, I don't know, some kind of TV show, and then you realize that there are more TV shows like that out there, and it grows further and further and it evolves in life. It's the same thing, it's just a bigger understanding of who you are. It's not that you necessarily are changing, it's that you have a better understanding of what, how to actually identify yourself. I'm gonna tell you my story, all right? And we do that 
with a triangle. Okay? There are three points to a triangle, right? So you have your sexual orientation, which is who you are, and how you feel. And then you have your sexual identity, which is what you tell other people. Are you gay? Are you heterosexual? Are you out yet? Have you told anyone? And then you have your behavior. And your behavior is made up of a lot of things. Who you're holding hands with, who you take to the dance, who you stare creepily at across the room, who you allow yourself to flirt with. All of that makes up your behavior, and all of that is seen by other people. Okay? And sometimes all three of these things match up, sometimes they don't. This is always the same, but sometimes these change. Okay? So we're going to go back like 13 years, a little 13 year old me. All right? And I'm at the movies with a bunch of my friends, and we go to see, they're all girls, and we go and see Lord of the Rings. Has anybody here ever seen Lord of the Rings? No? Maybe yes. so. All right. I totally yes. hated it. It was totally boring. Lies. I think I've told this story in the same place before. Um, so Lord of the Rings, I've seen it, totally boring, hated it. But we leave the movie theater. All my friends cannot stop talking about how hot Legolas is. Okay, Orlando Bloom, guy with the long blonde hair. They could not shut up. And I just didn't feel that way. I did not feel that attraction to him. Okay, they're talking about him coming on screen, feeling little butterflies in their stomach, getting excited about it, and I just didn't feel that way. And my friend Rosalie comes up to me, she's like, don't you find Orlando Bloom like totally hot? And I was like, no, not really, just might not be my type. And then she just says to me, she's like, what are you, like girls or something? And that was it. It just clicked in my head. Yeah, I liked girls. I had no idea that that was even something that could happen for someone before she said that. I didn't know that you were able to be attracted to those of the same gender before she said that. Because I felt all those things. I felt those butterflies. I felt that excitement. But not when Orlando Bloom came on screen, when Liv Tyler came on screen. That's when I got excited, but I didn't realize that that was physical attraction because I didn't know that you could be attracted. But once I figured it out, I was like, oh man, 13-year-old me, sexual orientation, gay. Sexual identity, heterosexual. I was nowhere near ready to tell anybody yet. I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know what it looked like. I didn't know who to talk to about it. I wouldn't even know what to say if I had somebody to talk to about it. So my identity, heterosexual. My behavior, heterosexual. I had a boyfriend, also ended up being gay. Super hilarious. Um, it's great. We move ahead three years. All right, I'm in high school now. I'm actually, I went to this high school. And when I was 16, in my um, 10th grade, uh, 11th grade year, they actually started the GSA. I figured out who I could talk to about it. I found other people who were going through the same thing that I was going through. And we talked it out and we asked questions. And I became comfortable and confident in who I am. I realized that my life with a woman would look exactly the same as my life with a man. And I became so confident in who I was. And I came out. I told everyone. I told my friends. I told my family. Completely positive experience for me. Okay, it was really great. So 16-year-old me, sexual orientation. Still gay. Sexual identity? Gay. Behavior? Gay. I let myself stare creepily at women. I flirted with other women. And I let people see that. So my behavior now matched my sexual orientation. Even though prior to that, even a year before that, maybe I wouldn't date a guy, but if a guy showed me attention, I would openly flirt back for fear of anybody knowing what my sexual orientation was because I was not ready to come out yet. But maybe there might be sometimes, it happens to me all the time, I'll be walking with my guy friends and we'll have our arms around each other because we're just walking, because we're friends. So the assumption there, if there's somebody just walking around, their assumption may be, well, she's got her arm around another guy. She must be heterosexual. But no, my sexual orientation, gay, remained a constant throughout all of this, correct? Right? Yeah? All right. Excellent. There is a strict difference between our sex, which is a biological aspect and our gender okay so we have our sex does anybody know the four things that make up our biological yeah. sex so you have your genitals your gonads your hormones and your chromosomes all of those make up your biological sex does anybody know what's tested almost tested um almost only tested when we are all born the only thing the doctor looks at when we are born to assign our sex our genitals so the doctor baby's born pulls out the baby penis, give him the blue blanket. Day one, minute one, assigned to sex, assigned to gender. 
without testing any of the other three aspects. Okay? So, baby is born, has a penis, he is assigned the sex of male. And then in our society, we have gender, which is a societal <coughs> construct. So we have what it means to be a man and what it means to be a woman in our society. And those genders, those two binary genders, are created by society. Because if you think about it, what it means to be a woman on Long Island today is very different from what it meant to be a woman on Long Island in the 1800s. And what it means to be a woman today on Long Island is very different than what it means to be a woman today in Afghanistan. Okay? Very different societal constructs. I want you to think about a piece of fabric, right? It goes around your, around your legs like this, kind of circular, circular form. What is that? A skirt. Who wears a skirt? Girls, right? In society, women wear skirts. Move over to Scotland. What is this called? Kilts. Kilts. Who wears kilts? Men. Men, right? Societal construct. Ah, oh, geez. So gender, our gender, what affects us on a daily basis is our gender. What it means to be a man, what it means to be a woman. What does not affect us on a daily basis is our chromosome levels, our hormone levels, our gonads. We don't go around wondering, worrying what those look like. Most of us don't. But we do sometimes, or most of the time, every day, are affected by what society says we should be what if we are a man or if we are a woman. Your GSA members are now going to make um, a few presentations or talk a little bit about themselves. Uh, hi, I'm Sarah, and I personally identify as gender fluid. Uh, this is one of the many non-binary genders, meaning that it doesn't fit into the established box of boy or girl. Um, it took me a long time to find like a label that made me feel comfortable. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of labels, but they can really be important in not feeling alone and finding people to relate to. Um, ever since I was little, there would be times when I was convinced I should have been born in a boy body. I would have dreams where I could switch back and forth between a male and a female body, and I always thought that it was just weird, and that I shouldn't tell anyone and just ignore it because I was a girl, right? When I hit middle school, I learned of the existence of transgender people. It made me feel a bit better knowing that though I wasn't really quite trans, maybe there was a reason for the way I felt. Um, finally, in high school, I discovered the existence of non-binary or gender queer people. I did a ton of research on all the different genders, and I finally felt more comfortable with how I felt. It was as if everything I felt and thought was somehow more valid now, and that it no was no longer weird, because there were people out there who had similar feelings to me. Uh, last April, I came out to my closest friends, and they were all super accepting. Um, I then came out to two of my cousins. The older one took it as an opportunity to learn about it, and it was nice having her be so supporting. Uh, she also said to me one of the most important things I probably have ever heard, and she said, you don't ever have to explain yourself to anyone. Um, I'm still trying to accept that as I come out to more people. Um, I have two friends who question me in ways that honestly make me feel extremely uncomfortable and invalidated. And it can be hard enough to explain a feeling without your friends questioning it. So I tend to get frustrated and annoyed when I'm trying to explain myself. And I know I don't have to, but I feel I need to explain myself to them. Um, so far, I've not come out to my parents, not because they would react badly necessarily, but because I don't want to deal with where the conversation could go. And I know it's sort of a concept that they probably wouldn't understand. Um, but aside from that, I'm glad I have you know the people I do have that are behind me and supporting me which I think everyone can do. Hi, I'm Julia. I'm pansexual. And like, I know a lot of people know what bisexuality means, but like, pansexuality is basically like, I can like a person regardless of the gender they identify as, if that makes any sense. Um, but what I wanted to share with you today was uh, my coming out stories. I've come out three times to three separate groups of people. So my first one was when, uh, on my 15th birthday party, um, I, me and my friends were all at the beach, and I just like sat there, and I was just like, guys, I'm bi. And they were just like, okay, that's cool. <laughs> at the time, I didn't know that there was such a thing as pansexuality, and I just assumed that I was bisexual, because I knew I could like girls and guys, but I didn't know that I could just ignore gender completely and just like someone because of their personality, which I think is kind of cool. Um, <laughs> and just the, my friends were just, they kind of were just like, oh, that's, a, that's cool. Like, we kind of assumed a little bit, because like, <laughs> um, yeah, so <laughs> about 
a year later, I had my first girlfriend. Um, and my friends were all like super supportive of it, and they were like, you guys are so cute, and I was like, thanks. And I still haven't told my family that I was attracted to girls. Like they knew that I liked guys. Like I was forward about me being like liking guys, but not about girls at all. And so I, I approached my sister and I was like, Alyssa, I have a girlfriend. And she was just like, that's so cute. And, and she was just like that. She just like got so happy. She was like, that's so cute. Like, like, what's her name? And I was like, um, I told her her name and like, like how long we've been like dating. But like, when I told her it was, I'd been dating her for like a week. <laughs> and, my sister, and my sister was just so happy. She was like, that is so cute. That is so, so cute. And um, I was like, yeah, but like, just like explain. Like, I still like guys though. And she was like, oh, that's cool. Like, I didn't know like that was a thing. And I was like, yeah. <coughs> and so that was like, like I had two positive experiences coming out. And then I, I wanted more of my family to know I wanted more people to know like who I am and like who I identify as, and so I pushed my mom, who I trust with pretty much everything, like with more than like more than anyone else. I trust my mom, and so I finally decided to come out to her and tell her I have a girlfriend. And my mom, she, her first question to me was, "Are you a lesbian now?" I said no, and she was just like, "Oh, do you have a girlfriend?" And I said. Well, yeah, but I can still like guys. And my mom just looked at me, and she was so confused. And she just said, "That's not a thing." I just dropped the subject. <laughs> I never brought it up to my mother again. I broke up with my girlfriend a couple of days later because, well, we broke up and then we tried to get back together. It didn't work out. It was bad because <laughs> I couldn't. I didn't have the support, and I felt just like it wasn't real. So I just ignored it. I, I still, I just kept identifying as pansexual. I, but I couldn't come out to people. Like I couldn't like just say that. And it took me a while just to get to the point where I was just okay with that again. Like I had to convince myself all over again that it was a real thing that I could like someone regardless of their gender. But ugh, the fact that my mom just told me that I couldn't was probably the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Um, just so, just if anyone ever comes out to you, like if they say that they're gender fluid or that they're non-binary or that they're aromantic or asexual or anything that you don't understand, don't say that they're not that. Don't invalidate them because that can just hurt them so much and make them question so much about themselves that they've already went through and they've gone to that point. So it's just important just to support your friends. ask questions I just want to say branching off what Julia said we need you allies to support us we need you allies people who identify as straight or cisgender you agree with your gender to say I support gay rights and I support you as an individual who identifies as lesbian or gay or bisexual or gender fluid or whatever because it's really important and unfortunately this world even though we think it's super progressive and it is compared to the past. It's not at the stage at which we would at which we would love for it to be at. So, uh, if you hear things like "that's so gay," or you hear people trying to stereotype others and say, "Oh, that person must be gay," or "that person must be a lesbian," step up and say, "Hey, you know, that's not really right for you to say. You can't judge someone based on how they look or how they act." or whatever. Just do any part you can just to say, I'm an ally and I support LGBT plus people. Okay? Mm -hmm. And also, not only, you know, you can't judge someone or that's not fair, mm -hmm. really what I say to people a lot is, mm -hmm. it's, it doesn't matter. It's not, a, it, it does, has nothing to do with you, mm -hmm. who that person loves, who that person marries, who that person identifies as. That is a human being. And if you look at people as human beings and you treat them with respect and dignity, you will be a lot happier in life. Yeah. You know, Honestly. and the world will be a better place.